weather worth watching with meteorologist Monty Webb. Weeknights at 5, 6, and 10. Monday Night Football. Brought to you by Beachwood Age Budweiser, the king of beers. This Bud's for you. De Beers, a diamond is forever. And Lincoln Mercury and the complete line of 1996 Mercury Automobiles. Chicago, Green Bay leading the Chicago Bears 24 to 7. And standing by with a very special guest is Lynn Swan. Lynn? Mark Harmon and uh, when we were back in college, Al at USC and Mark at UCLA, we played a few games against each other. You, you get close to the game on the sidelines now, you miss a little bit, Mark? Not at all, Lynn, do you? <laughs> <laughs> not the, not the speed these guys. <laughs> <laughs> they all have quick feet. They're all fast. No I, no, I don't miss it at all. And every time we played you, you won anyway, so it doesn't matter. So you were glad to get out of the business and into acting? Uh, I was glad to get out of getting beat by SC, you bet. I, I don't know if that makes me glad to be an actor, but... Uh, yeah, I'm having a good time doing this, yeah. Well, you've got a new show coming up on Thursday, Charlie Grace. Charlie Grace, what kind of guy is he? Just like you? I hope he's a guy that makes people want to tune in every Thursday night at 8 o'clock. Uh, it's a character I'm enjoying to play with a four-member cast. Uh, we've been doing it now for three months, and now it's on the air finally, so we're anxious for an air date, and we hope that people tune in and stay with the show. Well, you know, I know you're going to have a lot of really good, talented people guest starring on your show, so I'm looking forward to it. Well, we had Lynn Swan, and Lynn, you came on and played yourself. That's what I was talking about. difficult to do. I've been trying to figure out how to play myself for years. But uh, we're, we're, we're going to call it the Lynn Swan Show now, and you come back and play a, a real part sometime. As long as we don't air it on Monday nights. No, no, I, I heard you sing once with Randy Owen in concert, and you got a voice, and you can sing, or at least you think you do, so come back and do that on the show. I sang with your wife, and we were pretty good. Yeah, but you didn't give her the mic. You kept the mic, as I recall. Okay. Well, good luck to you. Thank you very much for coming out to the game. We'll see you later on during the year. Do a great job. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Al? All right. Thank you, Lynn. Charlie Grace on Thursday night as the kickoff comes down into the arms of Michael Timpson. Out past the 20. Michael Timpson runs it back to midfield. So, again, the Bears in need of that spark we talked about earlier. They got one on a drive when they were down 21 nothing, And Timpson here with a 45-yard run back, taking it out to the 48-yard line. Nifty little move down the sidelines by the former Patriot. We well, credit Curtis Conway's development, uh, accelerated development this year to Michael Timpson arriving. Anytime that kind of a receiver shows up, puts a little pressure on you, it has to help. He had 74 receptions last year with New England. And that's okay. green to the 49. You know, we watched Lynn Swan kidding around with Mark Harmon. Mark Harmon was a very good quarterback. I mean, yes, he, he was. He, uh, he had a great career at UCLA, and we talked about his dad before. I mean, Tom Harmon is one of the, the classic, legendary names in, in this sport. Heisman Trophy, all American, wasn't he? Heisman Michigan. Trophy winner yeah. from the University of Michigan. Mm -hmm. Tremendous player. Played with the Rams a couple old, years. Uh, old 98. Second down and eight at the 50-yard line. Picking up five, Robert Green to the 45. And let's take a look now at the numbers through the first 30 minutes of play. Third down conversion, so important. Green Bay, nine of 10 in that department. And that, they were, they were nine for nine and, and missed their very last one, which, which led to the field goal to make it 24 to seven. Just, it's imagine, hard to imagine how you could have a much more impressive first half than the Packers had offensively. What was it, 288 yards? Mm -hmm. Extraordinary. Third and three. And it is incomplete. Michael Timpson can't hold on. Doug Evans had him wrapped up. And a would-be first down goes a-wasting. But Doug Evans played that well. He got right in front of Timpson. Stayed within that five-yard zone. Just crowded him. And Timpson could not seem to step away from him, push off from him or something. Evan just kept his position, got a hand in there. Timpson was even surprised to see the ball. Todd Sauer run to kick. Remember, Charles Jordan, who would normally be running back these kicks, was hurt on the opening play of the game, and thus they go to Mike Pryor to accept it at the 17, and Mike, who is a safety, makes a fair catch. The Goodyear blimp spirit of Akron has made its way up from northeastern Ohio to southeastern Illinois. Hovering above Soldier Field. Well, the law of averages said we were going to have a great night because uh, in all of our years on Monday night, there was no night like last Halloween when these two teams met. I've never seen it rain sideways. I just felt so badly for Gail Sayers and, and Dick Butkus, mm -hmm. who's 
jerseys were retired at halftime. It was it, it, to say it dampened the ceremony was an understatement. Here's Bennett. Not only did it rain sideways, it rained sideways all night and cold. Cox and Zorich make the tackle. The Packers near perfect in their possessions in the first half. TD, 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 and a field goal. Well, look at the length of those drives. The first three for touchdown, 65, 83, and 99. No cheapies in there with the exception of the poorly played 99-yarder. And Brett Favre has operated this offense near perfection. A couple of missed throws. Other than that, he has been perfection in Mike Holmgren's offense. Second and ten. Far to the tight end. That's Mark Chamura. Could be Brett Jones if he were the 49ers, couldn't it? Mm. And it could be Keith Jackson if he if they could have <laughs> if he got him to report. <laughs> they traded to, for the rights to Keith Jackson, sent a second round draft choice to the to the Miami Dolphins, and Keith Jackson is a no show. He still is in Little Rock, Arkansas. Nowhere to be seen. I talked to Ron Wolf, their general manager, before the game. I said, what's the deal with Keith Jackson? He says his agent tells me he's retired. Although the Packers refuse to believe that, but he's not here. This is Bennett up to the 30-yard line. And the Packers also didn't like the fact that the Arizona Cardinals were making some noise with Buddy Ryan having coached Keith Jackson at Philadelphia. There is the connection right there. And Keith has a contract. He was traded by Miami for a second and third round choice, so he'd, he'd either have to play under that contract at Green Bay or renegotiate with Green Bay. You even hear the word tampering mm -hmm. being kicked around by the Packers. Eh? They're, they're upset with what they feel was some unfair intervention by the, by the Cardinals. First and 10 at the 30-yard line. It's up the screen to Dorsey Levens, and that works beautifully. For the 18, or he picks up 18 yards up to the 48 tackle by Carrier. There are people in the NFL that think that this guy, Brett Favre, sets up a screen better than any quarterback in the league. It's his mobility, it's his threat to get outside, and when he starts to move like this laterally, he draws everyone's attention. That's just beautifully executed by everybody involved. And Levens at the end decides, well, it's just time to put the shoulder down and get a couple extra yards. This has been a most impressive display by the Packers tonight. 10.45 left in the third. Green Bay up 24 to 7. And one of the rare times tonight, they shut down Bennett as Vincent Smith makes the stop, number 55. Green Bay's touchdowns tonight, all on passes from far. One to Brooks early on to make it 7-0. Then Anthony Morgan, the former Bear. Then Brooks again on a record-tying 99-yarder. Salon scored for Chicago. Hendrick added a field goal, and it's 24-7. That gives Farr five touchdowns on the year. Remember, this young man threw for 33 of them last year. Off to a great start with with five already and we got a ways to go in this game. That it more than flag is down more than half of those touchdown passes last year to Sterling Sharp now in the studio at ESPN Sharp with that neck injury and surgery and it was advised uh, that he retire. He has at least temporarily retired. Offside. I don't know what Sterling has in the number 90 in a neutral zone at the snap. Five yard penalty. Repeat the down. Second down. Lonzo Spellman over the left side. He was way across. He's on the near side. Closest guy to you. Well across the line. John Theory, number 94 on the far side, kind of fell into the neutral zone as well. There's Theory, their number one pick of a year ago. They've been moving him around a lot this year, trying to find him, find a weakness, put him in a spot where he can use his speed. Second and three. It's a first down as Robert Brooks makes the catch at the 36-yard line. Not much that Donnell Wilford could do against that. I mean, it was a frozen rope in right into the numbers. No way Wilford could play through the man for the ball. And another first down. And the one thing that Favre has, he did it last year. He cut his interceptions from 24 and 93 to 14 last year. And... He got off to a shaky start last week under tremendous pressure by the Rams through three interceptions. 
and he's thrown, thrown none of them up here tonight. Harvey, they're unhappy with what was happening. Rose running out of time on the clock, but he calls timeout. 829, 859 remaining in the third. These days, more and more people are doing things they never imagined before. People who never imagined a minivan could drive like a car are driving the Mercury Villager. People who never imagined how much fun driving could be are driving the Mercury Mystique. And on September 28th, we'll introduce a car that looks and feels unlike any you ever imagined. The Star Wars Trilogy on video. Now, the Star Wars Trilogy on video in THX. Feel the full force in THX. It's a difference you can see and hear. The original version of Star Wars on video. Buy it before it's gone forever. <laughs> for your 4x4, the Michelin LTX. Michelin technology gives it a smooth, quiet ride. Yet it's tough enough, Michelin enough, to get you through anything. Not many upsets in college football last weekend, but we'll see about this weekend. There's the uh, slate of games, regional coverage coming your way here on ABC at 3.30 Eastern and 12.30 Pacific. And then we've got a real beauty. Next week, we go to Miami, and we'll be in Miami three times this season. The Dolphins 2-0, hosting the Pittsburgh Steelers 2-0 on Monday Night Football a week from tonight. Green Bay leading here by 17. It's a first and 10 from the Chicago 35, and that's a nine-yard game. Farm on the money again. Mark Ingram makes his second catch. What a city. Beautiful fountain in Chicago. Old yes. faithful. My reaction every time I come here, I go out for a walk, and it, it's so clean. You walk around the city, and they should be so proud. And I know they are. Our director, Craig Janoff, our producer, Kenny Wolf, they just send our crews everywhere. <laughs> we must have hundreds of people scouring the city days before the game, gathering these shots. They drive the crew just mercilessly in an effort to bring us the best shots. Uh, what a budget. That's amazing. Dorsey Lemons to the 25-yard line and close to a first down. Vincent Schmidt makes the tackle. 8-0-8. Got somebody down on the field. One of the Packers is hurt. That's and Earl Dotson, the right tackle. As have all his line mates with the pack. Has played an outstanding game tonight. And he is uh, uncomfortable, to say the least. Injury timeout. Welcome to the greatest air connections of the past 25 years, brought to you by Southwest Airlines, celebrating its 25th anniversary. Southwest Airlines, the low fare airline. In a clash of former Super Bowl titans, the Bears' Mike Tomczak took to the Monday night skies and delivered two touchdown strikes that lowered the boom on the Giants. Tom Zack back to throw, blitz is on. Tom Zack locks it over the middle, going for Morris, and it's caught by Morris at the end of the side! <laughs> Airline infractions with Southwest Airlines Chairman Herb Kelleher. When other airlines commit penalties, I call them on it. Grounding the baggage. Uh-oh, looks like they're not gonna get this one off on time. Delay of flight. I said single file. Personal foul on sportsmanlike service. Why can Herb make the calls? Because Southwest is number one in baggage handling, on-time arrivals, and customer satisfaction of all major airlines. Next time you fly, make the right call. These days, more and more people are doing things they never imagined before. People who never imagined a minivan could drive like a car are driving the Mercury Villager. People who never imagined how much fun driving could be 
are driving the Mercury Mystique. And on September 28th, we'll introduce a car that looks and feels unlike any you ever imagined. Tomorrow, there's only one thing the most powerful family in America can't control. Each other. The Monroes. Special preview tomorrow on ABC. Big Earl Dotson coming off the field. A little concerned. They kind of rolled up on his left leg, but and yet they're holding his arm. Right. They're holding. They're yeah. looking at his right we were, arm. We were concerned about his leg, and they're looking at his right arm. His leg did get collapsed underneath, but it's considerable arm. Well, maybe that's it. It's, maybe we confused his arm for his leg. They're about the same size. Joe Sims takes his spot number 68. They blitz over that spot, but it's a run, and it's Bennett to the 20-yard line. He's tackled there by Marty Carter. It'll be second and five with 7.40 left in the third, and the Packers methodical tonight. Well, I'll tell you, Bennett made a very difficult five yards. Where to go to the outside, made a couple of jukes, and turned absolutely nothing into something. Five yards. Boy, does he love playing against the Bears. Bennett with... Mm. 400 yard games in his career three have come against Chicago and he's on a pace for another tonight 79 yards 21 carries slight stumble but far maintains his balance and then hits Brooks for a short game to the 17 yard line it'll be third and a deuce well Edgar Bennett's not the only guy that likes to rush against the Bears what in, in both those games last year the Packers go over 200 yards in both of those huge wins and there's Bennett's numbers going back to 92. Three of his hundred yarders came last year in 94. Well if he gets a hundred tonight he'll yeah. join Sanders McElhaney and Taylor as the only guys I and mean, that's pretty good company to have that many hundred yard games against the Bears. Third and a short two at the 17 yard line. They just do get the play off. It's incomplete and had Mark Carrier intercepted that one the score would have been 24 to 14. Brooks lost his footing and that was just about bye bye for Carrier. <laughs> Great reaction by yeah. Holmgren. Huh? Barb with the quick release Brooks losing his footing. And had Carrier been able to one hand it that was an easy six. This will be a 33 yard field goal attempt by Craig Hendrick kicking for the injured Jackie. And the whistle sounds before the kick goes through and would have been good. Referee Dick Hanta. Well somebody on the Packer line flinched. Looked like the tight end to our near side here flinched. That'll move him back five if that's the call. Ball start. Offense number 89 prior to the snap five yard penalty still fourth down. Mark Shimura is the tight end. Nolan Cromwell is the special teams coach the former Ram defensive back. Tremendous collegiate player Kansas I believe he was in yep. the running for the Heisman Trophy. He was. He was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now it's a 39 yard attempt. Ty Detmer is holding. Danny Abramowitz yelling block that kick or a euphemism no uh, no lack of enthusiasm or interest by Danny Abramowitz here's Hendricks second effort and that one is good this Jackie better get well yeah Hendrick is two for two from 32 and from 39 and the Packer lead is now 20. Fields, Garces High School. Yes, Ken Rutgers took a master's degree there recently from Cal State. Makes his home there. Old USC guy. Mm -hmm. Kickoff by Hendrick. This is Timpson. And he brings it back out to the 25-yard line. And the Bears will begin a very critical drive right now, down by 20 with 6-12 to go. Critical for us, yeah. <laughs> Critical for Mike McCaskey and the Bears. We were visiting with Mike today, the uh, president of the Bears, and he's talking about the fact that the stadium lease here at Soldier Field expires in 1999, and when this season ends, 
he said one way or another I'm going to have in place either a plan for a new stadium in Chicago that's his number one item on his wish list or the way he's talking right now a stadium across the border in Gary Indiana as Kramer goes to the air on first down and throws underneath to Tony Carter it would be similar to the Giants going to East Rutherford our blimp is right over Soldier Field right now and the lights in the distance and on the left that's the shoreline of Gary Indiana so it's about 20 miles away it's in the what they call Chicago land area but it's across the state line I guess there are four distinct options uh, the Bears have options on two pieces of property one's in the northwestern suburbs one is more in the western suburbs out towards Aurora then there is that piece of ground uh, in Indiana and the other option which of course is a complete last resort as Robert Green busts up the middle and picks up a first down would be to leave Chicago and and, and Mike made it very clear that that's that's not an option that he wants to even consider right now that is the absolute last resort and why the ultimatum uh, at the end of this year he feels that he has to have something in place it'll take four years to build a stadium get into the facility and uh, so consequently at the end of this year something's going to have to shake loose or he will be making the move it's not my money but boy I wish, I wish they could build a stadium right here where Soldier Field sits now first and ten at the 44 yard line and it's Kramer throwing and it is caught on the near sideline by Robert Green so back to back plays for Green now and Packers are saying he didn't catch it but the officials are saying he sure did first down at the 41 and the reason they can't Dan, I think probably is the monumental cost of it did he get it Whoa. Uh -oh. No, he didn't. No, 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 no. no, no. Nope. But, but look at his body position. The, the official certainly behind him can't see that. And the Bears need it. Rashawn Salam is in the game. He has the football. And he almost bounced it to the outside, but he's taken down at the 40. McCaskey also made it clear he wants an open air stadium. He wants a stadium with grass they've been going back and forth with the city and the county and the state of Illinois and there's been some proposal from time to time made as John Yurkovich is shaken up for a cramp, dome though. but he wants to keep it outdoors 359 left in the third and we have an injury timeout these days more and more people are doing things they never imagined before People who never imagined a minivan could drive like a car are driving the Mercury Villager. People who never imagined how much fun driving could be are driving the Mercury Mystique. And on September 28th, we'll introduce a car that looks and feels unlike any you ever imagined. Time. It fools you. You think you have all the time in the world, and then one morning you wake up, and you're older, and getting closer to retirement. But many Americans haven't saved enough to enjoy it. That's why there's Sun America. Ask your financial advisor about us today. Because it's not just your retirement, it's your future. Look to the sun, Sun America. Sorry, this trip has to be right at spring break, sweetheart. That's okay, Dad. Ibuprofen? What happened to Tylenol? It's not aspirin. I know that irritates my stomach. I thought it was okay, like Tylenol. Dad, did you read the label? It's not like Tylenol. Aspirin can irritate your stomach. Doctors will tell you even ibuprofen can irritate your stomach. Dad, stick with Tylenol. I will. And I'll see you Thursday. Thursday? I thought you were coming home Saturday. I changed my plans. Tylenol, the pain reliever hospitals use most. This is the murder case everyone will be talking about. CNN and hard copy called five times. It's going to turn into a circus. Murder One premieres Tuesday, September 19th on ABC. It is second down and nine at the 40-yard line. Carter and Salam are the running backs in this set. Chicago down by 20, 340 to go in the third. Raymer. And he makes a connection with Curtis Conway at the 29-yard line. And a first down. Yurkovich was helped off the field. The defensive tackle for the Green Bay Packers, but appears 
Well, you, uh, okay, he's back in the game, in fact. You labeled this a critical drive, Al, at the, at the beginning of it, and, and you're right on. And they've come this far inside the 30-yard line. The, the Bears need to come out of this with a touchdown. First and 10 at the 28-yard line. Green picks up a couple to the Green Bay 26. Wants that has to be thinking, what in the world? These teams are, are similar in terms of talent and quality, but it, it's like crazy that Green Bay just destroys Chicago. And it's it's Monday night. If I know one thing, if they lose this ball game, we've probably talked to Dave once at the last time this season. <laughs> It'll be we, nothing personal, I know. No, we've got two more Bear games, and he'll try something radical. And it might be us. We might be Genesis. <laughs> Second and eight at the 26-yard line. Kramer under pressure, and the pass is incomplete. Green, the intended receiver, covered by Teague. That's one of the few times that Kramer has had pressure. He's had plenty of time to deliver the ball. But Green Bay, they, they go strictly with that front four. They do not do a lot of blitzing. They count on Reggie White on one side, John Jones on the other to put the pressure on for the pass and play the run. Interesting in the stat there, guys. Do you see that? Not a single member of this offensive unit of the Chicago Bears has been mm -hmm. to a Pro Bowl. The only team in the NFL who boasts a, uh, a roster without a Pro Bowl offensive player. Third down and eight. And on a draw, it works. Green. First down, runs over Teague, tackled at the 12-yard line. 15-yard game. You saw a trait of Robert Green right there. When he has to make a decision, whether to head for the sideline or whether to head for the middle of the field, he almost always heads for the middle of the field, not what you'd expect from a guy who is only 5 feet 8. He is north and yep. south. There's the offensive coordinator, Ron Turner, calling the plays from high above. Robert Green, when given the chance, will run over somebody. First and ten at the 13-yard line. Kramer, oh, a Teague almost intercepts it. Intended for Graham. We talked about the lack of Pro Bowl players on the Bears team, but this is strictly a Wanstead team, and the average age is 26 years old. Well, in conjunction with that graphic we showed you before, last year the Bears go to the playoffs. Nobody goes to the Pro Bowl, which tells you the coach gets the most out of the least. Mm. Good use of the left hand by Graham, yeah. who just gets it out there on that ball. He looked more like the defensive back, and Teague, Teague looked like the receiver. Second and ten, 146 left in the third. Obvious audible by Kramer. Oh, and a fumble by Kramer. Third down and 11. Man, you're down by 20 points. It's tough to waste downs. You know, it often yes. happens. You you blow your own snap call. Yep. You're busy moving backs around, changing the play, and you literally forget your snap count. He stepped out of this early. Well, he didn't get a good snap either. Third and no, the center blocking to the right on the new call. Third down, 13 at the 15-yard line, and the Bears have to take a timeout before a pretty critical play. 117 left in the period. Chicago from the air from the Goodyear blip. What's that? Spirit of Akron. A gorgeous shot of a fountain from high above. Fountain of youth. Chicago, a very young team. Eric Kramer at the age of 30 is their second oldest player. The oldest is the place kicker, Kevin Butler. Only player to play in Super Bowl 20. After the season of 85, the near undefeated season. He was a rookie on that team, Kevin Butler. Third and 13, key play here, 15 yard line, Chicago down by 20, late in the third. Four man rush, and the catch is made by Robert Green. And he's to about the three, very close to a first down, then pushed all the way back by Leroy Butler. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting spot. It'll be short of the first, but very close to it. And the Bears down by 20, 57 ticks left in the period. Pretty much compelled to go for it. 
Hey, Robert Green kind of lost to trying to get in the end zone. He should have been thinking first down and perhaps could have picked up the first down. But he tried to make a little juke and lost his momentum and was held short of the first. Well, the Bears were in this situation before and eschewed the field goal and went ahead and went for it on fourth down and picked it up rather easily. They went with the, remember, they went with the four receiver set and then slammed right. it up between the tackles. Let's, uh, let's see if they go to that set again. Well, they might flip it. Do it on the opposite side. The Rashad Salam. The right hash mark here. Salam checks in, replaces Green. So in comes the beef. Salam at 226 pounds. And there's Flanagan in front of him at the fullback. Al, see, I'm doing the play by play. You want me to just do the rest? <laughs> well, it's Tony Carter in front of him at fullback. Oh, it's not. <laughs> see, that's why I'm no good at that. Doing it. <laughs> and on fourth down, this is Salam taking it to the two yard line for a first down. Now, back to the analysis. <laughs> first down is right. <laughs> well, two critical fourth down conversions, and that very much keeps Chicago in the game. They can get it in here. They've cut the lead to 13. A good look at it here from behind the Green Bay defense. That's as basic as football gets, fellas. That is nothing more than a good lead block and a pretty good spot. Drive blocking by the offensive line. I think they've got this uh, mm. rather yep. handily, don't they? A little bit more than the length of the football. And so first and goal at the two with 46 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Now you can back to play now, by play. Now you got Flanagan. There you go. There's Flanagan is the fullback. He was the lead blocker on their first touchdown. They fake. They go to him on a pass and he scores. <laughs> well, if if somebody in Aiken, South Carolina is watching this game. By the name of William Perry, he has been there and done that. <laughs> so they use him theoretically as a decoy at the beginning of the play and then go to a beautifully conceived play. Lanigan grew up in Green Bay and coming back to haunt them. His dad played for the Packers. Mm -hmm. Went off to Notre Dame. Well, Kevin Butler for the point after. Chris Gedney does the holding. Bears stay in the game on a fourth down conversion and subsequent touchdown pass to, of all people, the Notre Damer, the Golden Domer, James Flanagan. And you, and you know what? He made that look easy. I mean, this is really a fine catch and not an easy catch. It's right on the line. He has to catch it, backhands it, and I don't care what they say. That's the best way to catch the football. Well, they don't you to do it that way, but it's the best way. Anytime you put a defensive tackle on a linebacker, I mean, it's, no, you know, you know it's a mismatch. It, right? <laughs> yeah. Strickland had him all the way and uh, disregarded it. You know, it's kind of like, you know, Dion, a talented free agent. You know, he wants to play wide receiver. I, I can only suspect now that every really quality defensive tackle now, when he's a free agent, will demand to be placed at fullback and, and throw me the ball a couple times. It's uh, well, their agents will demand it. The inmates are running the asylum now. I don't think it's uh, an outrageous demand. The well, Flanagan caught a touchdown pass, uh, a long forgotten one in the playoff game last year against the 49ers. The Bears were blown out of that game, but Flanagan did add six. Well, on the pass from Walsh. Inside 30 seconds left in the third quarter. This one's not over yet. Although somehow the fair defense is going to have to do something big. Anthony Morgan running back sour runs kick and taken down in a wave at the 25 yard line. Well the fans are back into it. They are. And it's time for Wanstead's opportunistic defense that he's put together. Well you know to this is this is going to be interesting now for for Bob Slowick and 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 Dave Wanstead because their defense has been ineffective. And look at this, Flanagan, touchdown or not, still has to cover the kickoff. He's going, I can't believe I have to do this. 
I'm a chug it, chug it, chug it, chug it, chug it, chug it. <laughs> I'm a receiver. I'm a star. Oh. Look at this. In on the play. And now, of course, he's got to play. He's going to get a breather before he has to go back in, but he'll be on the field within a play or two, I imagine. From the 24-yard line, Edgar Bennett swinging to the outside, and the Bears now very much back in it emotionally, mentally, physically, and on the scoreboard as the third period expires. Don't go away. Yep, they stop him. End of three. It's 27 to 14, Green Bay. We'll be back with Monday Night Football after this word for ABC station. On from the sidelines as the sidelines as his Bears trail by 13. The Green Bay Packers second and 10 as the fourth quarter begins. Favre throws. Catch made close to a first down. Mark Ingram falls in his third reception of the evening. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff, Lynn Swan in Chicago. 27-14 Green Bay. Big time completion here. Ingram going down low. Short of the first down. No, they do move the chains. It sets up just for enough yardage to get the first down. And they needed that. The momentum was beginning to swing. The crowd was getting back into it. That far, very impressive tonight. Chasing 300 yards. He's at 274 right now. 17 of 27 through the air. 17 of 28 right now. As the coverage is good. Robert Brooks was there. Boy, I'll tell you that. Wolford that, double teamed him. That could have drawn a flag. He was knocked off his feet. So with an opportunity to go for that ball. I think, uh, well, let's see. I. It looked like the ball might have been past him. Yeah, see, the ball's yeah. past him. Did Carrier lose his footing, or did he do that intentionally? Uh, he lost it, and then he decided to make something out of it. To the chagrin yeah. of Robert Brooks. Carrier was actually sliding mm -hmm. on the ground as he went across. I thought he did it deliberately, but he didn't. Yeah. Play clock. Picking all the way down as far of a lost one from Morgan, and that's incomplete. And the coverage was very good there. And, and then Morgan wants a late hit called against Carrier. The ref is right there, the official right there looking on, and no well, flag. Mark so, Carrier got lucky because he could have been flagged. That's one of the we've seen players in that situation before who have been flagged. That's that very easily could have been a personal foul against the Bears. That's good coverage. That was one of the rare blitzes uh, tonight by the Bears. Green Bay picked it up. Watch how long this is after the play. You know, it's, that's, you know, you can say that's nitpicky or not, but I, I Mark Carrier took a chance there and got away with it. Two ex-teammates. Third and ten. Bennett swinging to the outside. Nothing doing. Kevin Minifield makes the stop, and the Bears hold and get the ball back. Well, I agree with every call thus far tonight on the part of Mike Holmgren. That one has me puzzled. Third and ten. And Green Bay is forced to punt for the first time in the game. Stop and think about what you just said. Punting for the first time tonight. Yep. A very rare stoppage by the Bears defensively. Craig Hendrick to punt. Jeff Graham to return it. And then Hendrick gets it away, and it's a wobbly, very short kick that rolls out of bounds in Green Bay territory at the 46-yard line. Mike Bartram was the snapper, and upon 11 yards after the Aaron snap. Bears in business, down by 13. Hendrick almost lost it, had to leap for it, one-hands it. Pulls it down. From snapping, that's the tight end, Mark Chamura, with the errant snap here. But what a play by Hendrick, stabbing that ball and getting a punt off. If he doesn't do that, the Bears are in much better field position. Huge play by Hendrick. Now they try to capitalize from the 46, and the pass is thrown behind and short. Graham, the intended receiver. 
Doug, Doug, Doug Evans with another fine job out on the corner. He's made some big plays tonight. Been left alone out there in single coverage many times. It's a good effort. Jeff Graham, not all that fast, but he's got some nifty moves. I don't know what what route that Kramer was expecting Graham to run and how was he he was expecting him to break it off, but it wasn't what he thought was, was coming from his wide receiver. Whatever it is, they should work on it a little more. Yeah. Sacked. And on the type of play where you're lucky if you don't fumble, Doug Evans coming in from behind. Kramer never knew he was there, and Kramer at least able to hold on to the football. Well, they don't do it often. No. Uh, well, it's Kramer a, doesn't send them very often, but his timing was perfect. Well, it's a corner blitz on, from the side where there was no wide receiver. There's no receiver to that side, so he's free to come. Doug Evans left alone over there, unaccounted for, able to do a hatchet job on Eric Kramer. First sack of the yeah. game for Green Bay. Evans' is second sack of his career. And it is third and 19 now from the 45. And Kramer throws a wobbly duck that's incomplete. Was that ball tipped? Yeah, that wasn't tipped. tipped or his arm was hit. One or the other, I think. Well, what, what a series of bad breaks for the Chicago Bears. They get, they get the bad snap. They get the good field position in Packer territory. And they blow up. Third punt now for Chicago. Todd Sauerbrunn, the second round draft choice. When they dealt Trace Armstrong to Miami, they got a two and a three, and Sauerbrunn was the two. Averaged 48 yards a kick last year at West Virginia. He really hasn't hit a hit a boomer all night tonight, has he? But a very effective punt here yeah. as it rolls out of bounds at the 11 yard line. Not a thing of art, but a 44 yard kick. 12:37 left in the fourth. Kramer three and out. Here's a reminder tomorrow night, the Jeff Foxworthy show, a special preview look. Coach has moved to Tuesday night, and in fact, Craig T has moved to the pros as a Coach appears tomorrow evening here on ABC, and then a look at the, what we have for you on Wednesday, a featuring Grace Under Fire with Mark Harmon, who was here tonight. Keep track of that, Al. What's uh, Coach's new team down in Miami? I can't, I cannot reveal it. <laughs> how do he he's not signed yet? Huh? No. How do you, how do he beat Jimmy Johnson to the job? <laughs> right. Well, there's still rumors. <laughs> First and ten for the Green Bay Packers at the 11 yard line. The fake wrap around to Bennett, and then Favre steps out of bounds up at the 14 yard line. Ron Cox runs him out of bounds. 12:31 left in the fourth quarter. Packers go home next week and face the New York Giants and the Bears stay in the conference and go down to Tampa Bay. Stay in the division as well. Brett Favre being a little careful there. He's sitting there with a 27-14 lead and uh, I think maybe in the early part of the game he might have tried to throw that across his body. Thought better of it. Stepped out of bounds. Second down and seven. Accepted by Donnell Wolford. And Wolford had a bad night, has turned a bad night into a very good one with a huge play. Uh -huh. Joe Kane forcing the issue on the blitz, forcing Favre to throw, and Wolford runs it back. That's one Favre would love to have back. Wolford in great position. What you don't to know. Get it into Brooks, and he threw it right into Wolford. Stayed right in position there. Stepped right in front of it. You just don't know if because of the blitz, if Favre was expecting Brooks to break off his pattern. Certainly, that's what Brett Favre is thinking. That Brooks is going to stop and curl in a couple yards before he did. Well, it was a yeah. major gamble by Wolford, and it paid off. First and goal. Bears at the eight. Down by 13. Salah. Touchdown. We're back. The Heisman Trophy winner, a touchdown last week and two tonight. 
Boy, but Donnell Wolford, who was victimized for a 99-yard touchdown earlier, made the play of the night for the Bears. You go for one because a touchdown and an extra point after this would put you in the lead. Butler with a point after. So Wolford beaten on the 99-yard pass. And then a child shall lead them. Salam, not even 21 years old, scoring two touchdowns tonight, 27 to 21. Interception, Bears cash in, crowd going wild with 11.57 left in the fourth quarter. 27 to 21, Green Bay. Sauerbrunn to kick off. Sends it down to the three and rolls into the end zone. He has to come out with it. That's Morgan, and he runs out of bounds at the 11-yard line. Well, I'll tell you, we've seen some great plays on the field tonight, well, but how you're going to see something off the field that's a classic here. Follow the ball as it goes up the tunnel from the right side of your screen. Watch this fella jump out of the stands into the tunnel. He appears to be at least 10 feet off the ground, if not more. This is a don't try this. No, don't try this. Watch this. There he goes off into space. He catches the ball, goes all the way down the tunnel. And, folks, the guy's all right. He's back in his seat. He just signed a three-year deal with the Bears. Edgar Bennett picks <laughs> up two. Jerry Jones just called and signed oh, him. This guy's back up in his seat. I would have thought he would have broken both his ankles. There he is. Is he stoked? <laughs> this guy. In more ways than one. <laughs> He's looking for their Oprah Winfrey show. Well, they're either going to give him a prize or they're throwing him out. He's oh. got Swanee. Swanee yeah, got him. <laughs> he <laughs> wants to go on. I want airtime. We can't talk to the players during the game. Second down and eight from the 13. Far. Trouble. And the Bear defense has picked a great time to get a red hot. Well, they got to do it for one more play. This will bring up third down. But Soldier Field has come alive. Lynch Swan. Hey, now we got the guy. What's your name? Michael Bantazis. I'm from the north side of Chicago. I played football at Sullivan well, High School. Well, Mike, you could have gotten yourself hurt jumping down like that. I play defense, offense. I got great hands. I play football my whole life. I love it, baby. You got a little Monday it. Night Football history, too. Oh, yes. Let's go back to the game. Now. Third down and 13, and it's incomplete. He threw a bullet in and out of the hands of Mark Ingram. Could have been caught. It would have been a great catch because Favre had to put everything on it. Ingram in a crowd, and he did not handle it. Going to be good field position for the Bears. Brett Favre put something on this ball. Oh, what a rocket shot. Oh, and oh it's deflected. hit by one of his. It looks like Chamura yeah. got his hands on it. Mark Chamura, the tight end, coming across. Didn't realize that he wasn't the intended receiver. So now Hendrick, the punt. Remember, the last snap was bad. This one is good. Oh, it is blocked. It is blocked, and it is blocked out of bounds at the two-yard For the second week in a row, the Packers have a punt blocked. They had one blocked by Isaac Bruce of the Rams last week. And now this time by Anthony Marshall of the Bears. Special teams again fail the Packers. Marshall with a nifty move to the inside, gets it with his right hand. And who would have thought this? The Bears two yards away from taking the lead. Well, Jeff Thomason 
on the attempt to block. Marshall stepped inside. If you're going to let him, if you're going to miss the block, you've got to miss it outside. You've got Flanagan in the backfield leading the way for Salon, who is stopped at the one and a half by Darius Holland. The There's the blocker. Anthony Marshall, who's had really no say in tonight's game until now, and Abramowitz's special teams putting Chicago in a position to take the lead. You know, he never blinks. No, but it, it certainly looks like some of his enthusiasm is paying off. Reggie in the defense, digging in on second and goal. 9.50 to go. Flanagan leads the way. Salam stopped at the three-yard line. Wayne Simmons, the linebacker, with the initial hit. So it's third down and goal now for Shermer's defense. Receivers back into the ball game. It'll be a change on the part of Green Bay. This one's going up in the air. Well, that was a superior play by Reggie White at the point of attack. He does a pretty good job of stopping Big Cat Williams right at the line of scrimmage. Green Bay takes a timeout. Chicago comes up with Salam as the fullback, offset by Carter, and Conway and Graham split, and Green Bay takes a timeout with third and goal from just inside the three-yard line. Well, the Bears in a jumbo formation there on the first two downs, and then they open it up with the wide receivers, but their coming into the ball game was no surprise to the Packers. They could see them coming in from the sidelines, yet they get caught with the wrong personnel. You know, it's an interesting game, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> this this game of football thoroughly dominated are the Chicago Bears. And with nine minutes and ten seconds still left in the football game, they got a chance to go ahead. And then goats become <laughs> heroes and vice versa with Donnell Wolford beaten earlier for the 99-yarder. And then obscure players like Marshall turning in spectacular plays like this one and meaningful plays. Marshall with a little juke to the outside. Thomason went for it. Broke it to the inside. You cannot let that man on the inside. You're going to miss. He has, you have to miss on the outside. Green and Johnson are now in the backfield. Third down and goal. That's Conway coming in motion. And it's a little fade to Graham, but he's out of bounds. He's out of bounds. Craig Newsom with the coverage. The rookie, the draft choice, the number one pick from oh, Arizona State. Yeah, good coverage it was, too. He was right there. That would have had to have been absolutely perfect, and it wasn't. This, this was a superior piece of defensive work on these three plays by the Packers. Two complete stuffs on the runs on first and second down, and then a, a snuff job on the pass play. The number one draft pick from Arizona State, this is Greg Newsom. That ball was, that ball was thrown out of bounds to begin with. Mm -hmm. 20-yard field goal it's attempt. Same distance as an extra point to try to move Chicago within three. Kevin Butler. Getting with the hole. The kick is good, and we have 9-0-2 remaining in regulation. Well, a, a victory of sorts for the Packers. When, when you turn the ball over on your own two-yard line and force the team to kick a field goal, that's a victory. You have preserved... Fritz Shermer's group has preserved the lead and, and made the kind of a goal line stand that can invigorate your ball club a little bit. It's funny, on a team with Reggie White and Sean Jones leading the way and guys like George Teague and Leroy Butler, you've got Darius Holland, Wayne Simmons, yeah. and Craig Newsom who turned in those three vital defensive plays for Green Bay. That's why they call football a team game. This is not the U.S. Open where Sampras is playing Agassi all by yourself. This is a team game. Well, and of course, set up for obscure. How about Anthony Marshall? Anthony Marshall putting them in that position. Right. 27 to 24. Bears, and they've been around for a few years, as you know. They won about 600 games, but never when they've trailed by 21. And they were down 21 nothing in this one. Sour Braun sends it to the one-yard line. And this is Robert Brooks running back the kick. And Brooks takes it out 
to the 29. Remember, on the very opening kickoff, Charles Jordan was hurt, and so they've gone to a potpourri of returners tonight. So now Favre tries to get resettled. Well, that was a jarring interception he suffered by Donnell Wolford. He read the blitz. He read correctly that Wolford should have been in man coverage, should have been respecting a deep move. Wolford gambled totally and came up with the interception. 8.51 to play. Green Bay leading by three. And throws into traffic and completes it to Edgar Bennett, but that's for a loss of a yard. Chris Orich and Joe Keane were there. I've heard of this short passing game of the West Coast offense, and <laughs> <laughs> but that's a little ludicrous there. You could have handed it to him. Make it a, a two-yard loss at second and 12. Dorsey Levins makes the catch and gets rolled down on an ankle tackle up at the 34-yard line by Ron Cox. And it will be third down and five. Boy, that's a good play by Ron Cox. He's really in a trail position on that play. Looks like Levins is actually going to get a lot more yardage than he did. Cox showing that team speed that Dave Wanstead has tried so hard to instill and, and draft for and, and trade for and improve this ball club. It paid a dividend there. Third and five. Seven and a half minutes to play in regulation. And it's caught by the tight end Chamora. Big play into Bear territory. Tackled at the 46-yard line by Mark Carrier. Protecting the ball was Chamora. Well, and a nice tonight for him. And a nice rhythm pass. Look at the protection. He gets there. back there. He just plants. He dumps it. You're not putting Farb in a position where he has to improvise. And the Bears playing entirely too softly in their zone gave Chamura all sorts of room, Frank. This kind of an offense, you have got to get some yeah. kind of hands in the face of Farb, some kind of pressure, even though you don't get to it. Get the hands up. The 46. It's Bennett, and he's taken down immediately by Jim Flanagan, having a huge night on both sides of the ball. And Mark Chamora is hurt. The interesting thing about Flanagan playing tonight is he's having to play a lot across from Aaron Taylor, the big guard for the Green Bay Packers, and they were teammates uh, at Notre Dame, good friends. And uh, they've got to lock up tonight, big man on big man, a lot of this game. That can't be, uh, that can't be easy to do. Mark Chamura is number 89, and he's going to get rolled up from behind. It's forced over backwards by Al Fontenot. And your immediate inclination is to think of something with a knee or an ankle. We're looking at the left yeah. leg. And they are very uh, vulnerable in that position are the Packers at tight end. We talked about Keith Jackson not reporting. Shamura has been the guy and he had a big week last week scored a touchdown and he's had some key plays tonight and without him you then go to Jeff Thomason who's been sparingly used in his career and Mike Bartram is the other guy. And there is Bartram and when you have a tight end wearing number 48 you know it's a guy who doesn't have a lot of experience mm -hmm. as a tight end. Oh you're right. <laughs> Jay Novacek backwards. Yeah. What to do and when you finish a game like this, you would go to a three wide receiver, a four wide receiver. It especially hurts them if you have to do that in these in this situation where they'd love to be able to take as much time off the clock as they can. Three point lead. I mean, Chamara had seven receptions last week. He's got three in tonight's ball game. Those are the kind of people that that you have to count on 
when you're trying to spread the ball out with the absence of Sterling Sharp. And he is putting no weight at all on that left leg. Shimura goes out, and Jeff Thomason, who has caught one pass tonight, will come into the game. With 6.35 remaining in the fourth quarter, Green Bay has led all the way. Keith Jackson, if you're watching this game, I think you know uh, you'll be expecting a call from Ron Wolf tomorrow morning. Second down and nine at the 45-yard line. Far rolled down at the 47-yard line. In at his feet, who else? Flanagan. He's had a fumble recovery. He blocked on a touchdown. He scored a touchdown. He had a couple of big quarterback hurries, a big tackle on the prior play, and he's involved here as well. The first sack of the night against Favre. He's working against Harry Galbraith, the right guard, just stays with it, stays with it. Favre had no place to go. Favre wasn't even close to throwing the football. Yeah, that was good coverage downfield yeah. also. Yeah, he had. This is a rhythm offense, and they took away his rhythm with good coverage. Third down and 10 at the 46-yard line. Three-man rush. They set up the screen. Bennett and Bennett diving for that first down. What a play by Bennett to the 33-yard line. <laughs> Edgar Bennett. Ben Bennett does a little bit of everything. We talked about it early in the game. Good receiver, good running back. Made some key runs tonight. One in particular on a first down we pointed out earlier, but watch this one. You're going to fall one thing, carrying the ball in the wrong hand, but that's about the one. Well, forget about it. I wouldn't send him to the bench, no. <laughs> Knew exactly where that marker no, was. No for the first yeah. down. No trip to the woodshed for Edgar Bennett. A, he caught 78 balls last year. Farm is over 300, 312 tonight. And here's Bennett. He's taken down immediately. Jason Smith is right there, along with John Theory. Good fake there by Brett Favre. He makes the handoff and falls flat on his flat on his face. Kid's exciting. He makes things happen. Some good, some bad. He does get in some remarkable positions, doesn't he? Good year blip. We haven't seen his 360 tonight yet. He's <laughs> spinning away from the center as he did last week against the Rams. I'm going to fly the blimp in a couple weeks. All right. Take my logbook and uh, go up there and tool around. Look out, Earth. It's second and 11. Here's Dorsey Levins. Dorsey Levins takes it to the 13 yard line. The inside handoff. Aaron Taylor helped guide his way with a nice block. Last year's number one pick. And Dorsey Levins rambles for a big first down. 21 yards. Levens as a rookie played halfback. They put him in the fullback when they moved Bennett over to the left side. Huge opening over the right side. And Great blocking. This offensive line that was absolutely atrocious yeah. a week ago has turned it completely around tonight. Good blocking on the right by Dotson, Galbraith, and Winters, and then the trap block by Aaron Taylor, the left guard. Really opened that up. From the 12, Edgar Bennett to the 9. <laughs> Edgar Bennett tonight with 85 yards on the ground to the nine yard line. It'll be second down and seven. Dave Wonstead wondering, how do I keep the Packers below 30 points? Scored 40 in one game last year, what, 33 in another? Now they've got 27 and they're knocking on the door again. And the Packers taking a lot of time off the clock. 3.05 left in regulation. To blitz or not to blitz? That's the question now. They don't. Far steps up, guns one, incomplete. Robert Brooks was there, and his hands are burning right now. Far was taking no chance with anyone deflecting that, knocking it up in the air, getting the interception. He just drilled that. Well, he got Alonzo Spellman. He made him leave his feet. Once he did that, it's just like playing basketball. If you can fake your defender and make him leave his feet, you've won the game. And that's what Brett Barb did with Spellman, got him off his feet. Brooks bumped downfield a little bit by a carrier. Hey, this one that could have been caught. Yes, sir. 
It had an awful lot on it. You saw it in slow motion. It didn't look like that in real life. Huge play. Double tight end set. Third and seven. Lofted and incomplete. Broken up. Ingram was the intended receiver. And broken up in the corner of the end zone, Jeremy Lincoln, who's been off and on. And in fact, last night, Dave Wanstead was saying he better pick it up or he's coming out. He's made a couple of good plays tonight, and he's had a lot of opportunities. Green Bay he struggled throughout the preseason. He had a bad game a week ago, and consequently, you're going to get a lot of attention coming your way. Well, it's bad games. Pretty well played here. His bad games have come in the form of penalties. 27 yards. Whoa. Field goal attempt and a bobble snap. And Ty Detmer, who is a quarterback, has nobody to throw to. Ooh, that changes it. Frank Winters was the snapper. Detmer the holder. And so they can't get three, and it's a big, big, big play. Instead of a six-point lead, it's an opportunity for the Bears to just get into field goal range. Kevin thought, Butler got a lump in his throat. I thought it was a good, I thought it was a good snap. It just looked like Detmer didn't handle it. At least in the term of snaps, it, it looked like it was pretty much there. Couldn't be better. Oh yeah. The snap is fine. Just Ooh. Detmer lost the handle on it. Then tried to make something happen. Which nobody else knew what had happened. No. There was no one downfield. You've he just to, lost it. You got to get very lucky to convert a bad snap like that into much of anything unless you can run it in. Lots so of time. Now the Bears, 240 remaining. First and ten from their own nine-yard line. Eric Kramer sets up a backside screen to Robert Green. Good blocking and a nine-yard gain and out of bounds at the 18-yard line. When you have been manhandled the way the Chicago Bears have been manhandled tonight and you're looking at two minutes and 33 seconds left in a ball game and you have a chance to either tie it or win it you count yourself among the very fortunate and that's the position the Bears are in now trailing by only three points they have a chance to tie or win this ball game with a long drive Chicago has two timeouts and the two minute warning so a ton of time. 233 left. Now they got a ton of field to cover as well. Second down and one at the 18-yard line. And he comes this way to Anthony Johnson, and he gets dragged down at the 24-yard line by George Kuntz. And that's a first down. And Chicago doesn't want to waste a timeout, but they want to get the playoff in a hurry. So they'll come up without a huddle at the 24-yard line. Good job of reading the blitz that time by Green and Kramer both. Kramer. Uh -oh. Under pressure, ball uh -oh. fumble, stripped by Reggie White. Right. Reggie White stripped the football. Green Bay saying they've got it. And they do. Wayne Simmons comes up with the football. And so Reggie White has had a fairly quiet night. By Green Bay. All of a sudden turns it into a very noisy one. Eric Kramer trying to buy some extra time. Trying to stay alive in the pocket. Had the ball sitting right out there. Had it sitting as if it's on a platter and it was swiped away. He so often double teamed with Reggie White. And somehow the extra effort scoops it out. Green Bay has the football back. Two minute warning. Step back into the pocket. Reggie White double team reaches through the double team flips the ball out and there was a wild scramble for it where a couple of Bears had an opportunity to get it. You're right there. I think Andy Heck has a shot at it. And then here comes Tony Carter number 30. He actually has the ball right under his midsection. But look at the right arm there of Wayne Simmons. He just goes in and scoops it out drags it out and he recovers it for the pack. That's why that thing's a little tough to handle. It's pointed on both ends and fat in the middle. It rolls around. Take some awkward bounces. Chicago will have to take its timeouts on defense. Edgar Bennett picks up two to the 20 yard line and Chicago will take a timeout here. Footnote to that Reggie White play. Reggie now has 148 and a half career sacks. That is officially a sack and a forced fumble. And since they've been keeping records of course Deacon Jones would dispute it. But Reggie is the all time sack leader. 
and he had two and a half last week and three and a half already this season. And that's a pretty good dividend. He just paid on the 17 million bucks. But you, uh, you know, I have, they didn't start keeping track of sacks until what, 82? Yeah. You know, there was a lot of football played in this league prior to 1982, and uh, I think you have to you have to take that record with a grain of salt when you consider guys like Deacon Jones. Deacon Jones, uh, right to the top of the list. Doesn't yes, sir. Taking nothing away from Reggie, because Reggie would have had an awful lot of sacks back in the 50s or the 40s or the 60s or the 70s. And Reggie could have had an extra year in the National Football League, but he opted, as you'll recall, out of Tennessee to play one season in the USFL. In fact, two seasons, though in his second season in the USFL, he also played in the NFL right. that fall. Second down and eight from the 20-yard line. Third and seven. Timeout, Chicago, their last one. And we'll take time to welcome two more new affiliates to the ABC Television Network. Tonight is their first game of ABC's Monday Night Football. They've seen a great one. They're uh, ABC 6 in Providence, Rhode Island, and KMGH TV Channel 7 in Denver, Colorado. And speaking of Denver, we'll be there on October the 16th when the Broncos face the Raiders. You guys can help Kathy and I celebrate our anniversary. All right. Is that an invitation? Yeah, I feel so inclined. And Do you know what I think about <laughs> when, when I when I think of Reggie White and Deacon Jones and this whole thing pre '82, post '82, is is back in the days when when Deacon Jones was was terrorizing quarterbacks, the head slap was a legal weapon that a defensive end or a tackle could just haul off and wall up an offensive lineman right on the ear hole, right on the side of the helmet, and I think of how big these guys have gotten today the Bruce Smiths and the Reggie Whites of the world if they, they could use a, if they could use a head slap I, I it, it makes me clench my teeth in pain I, I can't imagine that today well in any event the Deacon and the Reverend Good. both have a lot of sacks yeah and a third down Edgar Bennett seeks that first down has to get to the 12-yard line and if he does and I think he did that'll write an end to this one as Chicago took its timeouts and Bennett on the third and seven is somehow able to squeeze his way through the line, get to the 11-yard line. They'll move the chains, and that's a first down, and no timeouts left for Chicago. And guess whose tail he goes Ooh. right off of to get that first down? How about Ken Rutgers, the left tackle? And wants that, that is furious. What a gutsy uh, performance on his part tonight. He was not expected to be there. No, no. Shouldn't have been there in all probability. But a couple of kneel downs will end this one as Brett Favre has a big night as he throws the 312 yards. Bennett rushes for 96. The frustration continues for Dave Wanstead. He just can't do anything to beat Mike Holmgren's Green Bay Packers. Well, tonight on Nightline, Jerry Jones will be one of the guests. And of course, Jerry has made a ton of news recently with his Nike deal. And he's bucking the NFL and the Deion Sanders deal and the rest. And he will be one of the guests tonight on Nightline, which follows your late local news. Then Good Morning America and the Today Show and then Howdy <laughs> Doody and it's on and on. <laughs> Bears have just lost their eighth straight Monday night game. Reggie, Reggie, Reggie. And again, the Green Bay Packers really had to win. This was a vital early season game. They win it. They are one and one. The Bears are one and one. <laughs> a sigh of relief from Mike Holmgren. It was that close. He had a 21 to nothing lead. He watched it nearly evaporate, but his team holds on to win the game 27 to 24. And how do we convince Dave Wanstead that it's not our fault? Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a great tribute to both of these teams. They, <laughs> Chicago battling back. Green Bay got themselves in trouble, and they came yeah. battling back. And the hero, perhaps, of the night. <laughs> <laughs> That's about a 20-foot drop. Yep. Yep. Unbelievable. Son of Flubber. <laughs> next, <laughs> next week, Miami is the site. Good one. The Dolphins and the Steelers. Until then, Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff, Lynn Swan. Good night from Chicago.